Being very entitled and controlling, narcissists have no difficulty stepping all over your personal boundaries, so that's why I put together an extensive video class called This Is Me. It has 25 videos, written documents, guided questions. I'm gonna teach you how to have healthy boundaries. There's a link below, and I hope you'll find it to be quite therapeutic. You know that narcissists can be very toxic individuals. They, they have such a strong need for control because they're so completely absorbed with themselves and impressed with themselves and entitled that it's all about them when they engage with you. And you've heard lots of individuals who have said, well, the best way for you to deal with a narcissist is to just go no contact, have nothing to do with them. Now, that can be a very desirable uh, outcome but there simply are going to be times when that's just not going to be very feasible. There are times of the year when you're going to have group activities, or it may be at work or within family circumstances where you want to be around other individuals or you have projects or uh, uh, certain kinds of things that you're doing with other individuals, and there that narcissist is, and you just simply can't get, uh, get around them. They're just going to be there. And so I'm wondering if we can figure out how you can at least, if, even if you can't go no contact, you can at least get your mind established in such a way where when narcissists are being narcissistic and they're coming at you with all of their negativity, you're going to be able to outsmart them to, to the point where you can even shut them down, okay? Let, let's keep in mind, narcissists must be relevant to you. They, they want you to think that their opinions or their ways are the, the ways that matter and the opinions that matter most. But what if you decided, no, that's not how I think. And let's see if we can get your mind fixed on certain kinds of notions. And then I'm going to give you some illustrations about how this works so that you can shut them down and you can go your merry way and not have to be completely pulled under when you're required to be in their presence. Now, there are certain uh, assumptions that I'm going to start with upstairs uh, before I actually have my behaviors and communications toward them. You see, I make the assumption that a narcissist is a troubled person. And that being the case, this is certainly not somebody that I can look to that's going to establish my pace. I also make the assumption that they're easily negative. And so when they show up and they're easily negative, it, it, it's not like I'm going to think, I can't believe this. <laughs> you know, uh, narcissists can be complaint machines. I like finding things that are good, but I'm going to go ahead and remind myself that's who I'm dealing with. It doesn't catch me off guard. Likewise, I'm going to remind myself and I'm going to get prepared mentally to know that the narcissist can be down on my case. You know what, though? I'm not down on my case. Like I say, they're negative and they have to be superior. And that means that somebody has to be in the inferior role and they assign that to you, but it doesn't mean that it's accurate. That being the case, I'm not going to get suckered into whatever goes along with their thinking relative to that. In addition, and this is a big one, I'm going to remind myself that narcissists are masters at what we call intermittent reinforcement. And when we say intermittent reinforcement, basically it's uh, they're consistently inconsistent. Sometimes they can give you some real positive reinforcement and you think, hey, you know, things are going good here. But then I'm not going to get uh, too pulled in by that because uh, it's just when I feel like everything's all right, then they come up with a negative reinforcement and back and forth, and there's no particular rhyme or reason, and I'm not going to get pulled under by that. That's just what they do. Like I say, they're consistently inconsistent. I'm going to factor that in. In addition, I know that narcissists tend to look only at external kinds of things. They tend not to look at matters of character or integrity, and they may imply that if I made a mistake or if you did something they didn't like, that, that you're a bad person, but they don't really take time to get to know you. That's part of their lack of, of empathy. I'm going to factor that in too and remind myself these are individuals that don't make good pronouncements about you or me because they're not inclined to do that. They're external people only. And then I'm also going to remind myself that narcissists have lots of expectations. And by that, I mean, uh, they have the agenda that they bring with you. 
And so whenever I'm in the presence of that narcissistic individual, I'm going to remind myself straight up front that I cannot afford to allow that person to, to have such a grip on my reactions or my emotions or my well, uh, plans that I have when I'm around other individuals that they shut me down. No, I'm going to shut them down, but I'm going to do so not in an argumentative or forceful or overbearing way. I'm going to shut that narcissist down by just letting it be known. <laughs> you don't get to me. You, your, your words don't make me tremble and shake. Let me give you an idea of what I'm talking about. Let's suppose that you're in a setting and there's that narcissistic individual, I haven't seen them for a while and they come along and before you know it, they start complaining. And it can be about who knows what. They may complain about the food that's in front of them. They may complain about the weather they've been having. They may complain about decisions that someone made about how the activities in front of you are unfolding. Uh, they're, they're quite good, if we could say you're good at something, at uh, letting it be known, I don't like things. And, and, and they'll, they'll be openly critical. What if, with all of this mindset that I just mentioned, what if you decided... I don't want to be a complainer. And so you might say to that narcissist, I know that there's some things that you don't like here, but there are lots of things that at least I like. And whether it's the weather or the food or how we're handling activities, I'm just going to go, I'm just going to roll with it. Sorry, but if that's something that bothers you, actually, I'm not sorry. It doesn't bother me and I'm going to be okay with it. I'm going to roll with it. Say it out loud. Let them know. I don't share your thoughts with you. Or let's suppose that they uh, complain about other family members or other uh, people that are in the social circle or wherever it might be, and they may say something like, uh, well, this person over here, you know, they, uh, they're they so insecure. This person over here, they think they're all that. And they may just complain and gripe and moan and groan about the habits that they have or they didn't like the way that their kids uh, uh, unfolded with certain kind of activities. Um, what if you decided... I'm not going to go into their binary, all or nothing, black or white kind of thinking. And I'm going to be let, uh, let it be known, well, those people that you're complaining about, here's what I like about them. And this is what that person over here did uh, maybe a year ago, maybe last week that really helped me out. And that being the case, I just, I'm, I'm not going to just kick them to the curb. That may be something you'll want to do, but I like finding the things in people that are right. Say it. And, and let it be known. That's how I think. Or let's suppose that you're in a situation where there are certain activities that you're going to share in with a group. And of course, that narcissistic individual with their high need for control, they may complain about that. It may be that you're going to uh, bring some games out and play, or there, there's a schedule that needs to be managed, or, you know, you're, you're thinking about who's going to sit where, and then they can find things that uh, will uh, give them a reason to complain. What if you decided, well, I'm going to just go ahead and flow with whatever might be in front of us. And that if that narcissist is griping and moaning and groaning, I'm not going to join in and I'm going to let it be known. Well, it seems to me that this person over here has a plan. I'll go along with that. And if the narcissist comes along and says, well, I just think that's ridiculous. My response is going to be, I know you think that, but I'm going to go along with it anyway and let it be known. I don't think like you. That's going to, uh, they, they want you to argue. They want you to come back at them. It's like, I'm going to stand up for who I am. By the way, we, we uh, have a word for that. It's called boundaries. I'm going to stand up for who I am, but I'm, I'm not going to argue with you. You don't have to stand up with me. Or how about another one? And this is a very common thing. Let's suppose that you're in that group setting and sure enough, the narcissist, <laughs> you've been waiting for it. They come out and start talking about opinions that are highly controversial and who knows what the opinion might be. And in doing so, they, they, they show themselves to be very dogmatic, very stubborn, very unbending, very unaccepting of individuals who might be different. And it's, it's so tempting for you to just get drawn into a debate about being correct versus incorrect. Let's think about that. Have you ever changed that person's mind through arguing with them? No, it doesn't work. What if you decided to say out loud, I know that that opinion is very important to you, but it's not an opinion that I share. That's it. And then when they say, well, why, why is that? And, and uh, you're, you must be crazy if you think uh, something different than that. And then my response to that is going to be, I'm, I'm aware that you think that. But nonetheless, that's where I am. 
and just let it be known. I'm not getting suckered in and you're not going to draw me into some sort of uh, fruitless debate uh, that uh, is going to take us nowhere. Or another thing that a narcissist might do. Sometimes you're in a, a group setting and the narcissist, instead of trying to nitpick at you, uh, they may just completely ignore you. And it may be that they'll let it be known, uh, you're not even worth the time of day. And instead of you trembling, it's like, I'm just going to drop my expectation that we're going to have the connection. And I'm going to focus on the individuals that are in this um, scenario here that I like. If a narcissist feels like they have to treat me in a you know, way that says you don't even exist, that's on them. It's not on me. You see, the conclusion that I draw is that narcissists have to be in control, but I'm not required to be, to be under their control. Narcissists are not satisfied when I have independent thoughts, when you have independent thoughts. I am satisfied with my independent thoughts, and I hope you can be the same. Narcissists like to blame. Narcissists like to accuse and criticize. They can't be satisfied. But when I hear that or experience that, it's like, that's not nearly uh, uh, about me as it is about who they are. And I'm just going to go ahead and let their negativity be what it is. It's commentary about who they are. Narcissists are simply full of themselves. You know what I like to be full of? Kindness, encouragement, love, companionship. And so uh, I'm, you know, the, the way you shut down a narcissist, the way you outsmart them is you don't go into their game and you openly let it be known. I see myself as unique. I see myself as distinct. And when they come along and say, well, that's a bad idea, then my response is going to be to that. Well, we differ, don't we? Uh, their negativity is not relevant to me and it doesn't have to be rel uh, relevant to you. And uh, I, I, I'm just going to drop any illusion that we're going to make that person suddenly agreeable because they're not going to be. But you know what? It's good for you just to simply be you. Let's let that be your calling card. And if the narcissist turns and walks away and says, well, I don't want to deal with you. Okay, I succeeded. I don't want to deal with it either. Now, I'm hoping that you can have a sense of self-trust, and that's really what we're talking about. Hold on to your self-trust. You don't have to be arrogant. You don't have to be argumentative, but you can hold on with a calm firmness. That's what we're all about here. Uh, I hope that videos such as this can give you some good things to think about. If you've not already hit the subscribe button, go ahead and do so. We'll keep more videos coming in your direction. I truly appreciate being on the journey with you. Uh, likewise, if you have a need for therapy, and many times when you're dealing with these individuals, particularly in an ongoing way, and you need someone to help you unpack, uh, unpack it, I would strongly encourage that you seek the therapy that would be beneficial for you. I'm so pleased that I've been sponsored by the people at betterhelp.com for several years now. And uh, there's a link below that will take you to their uh, website uh, for online therapy. It's very accessible. It's very affordable. And, uh, and uh, I've received good feedback on that. So check that, if that, check that out if, if that's a need that you have. Likewise, I have my therapeutic courses. And uh, these are designed to help you walk through various kinds of issues related to that narcissist. Uh, each course has multiple videos with written documents and guided questions. We have Ready, Set, Connect about how to have successful connection skills. Uh, free to be about finding yourself despite the controllers. This is me establishing the boundaries. We have my webinars, which are shorter versions that you can uh, you know, look into. We also have my podcast, our website with many articles, my books, many resources. You know what? If a narcissist wants you to uh, to uh, get sucked in to their style, the way you shut them down is you decide mentally first in advance that their opinions are not relevant to me. And then second, you stand up for who you are uh, briefly, uh, succinctly, but you let it be known, I'm okay with who I am. And if the narcissist or when the narcissist doesn't like it, you remind yourself, well, I'm on team healthy and I stand for dignity, respect, and civility. And that positions you then to become a person of peace that they're going to have a great deal of time or difficulty finding.